Lesson 2 covers network connectivity with an emphasis on connecting to a TCP IP network. Most likely you've already gotten your computers connected to the network and communicating because your system is configured to use DHCP. However, you need to understand all the various components that make network connectivity possible so you know the various configuration options and how to troubleshoot network connectivity. In this section, you, student, you will learn uh, how to connect to a network and configure windows to communicate over a TCP IP network, describe how host addresses and subnet mask relate to each other, describe how the default gateway is used to communicate with remote subnets, explain the differences between public and private addresses, also explain how NAT and AT relates to private addresses, compare and contrast IP version 4 and IP version 6 addressing, Explain how name resolution, both DNS and WINS, allows users to find network resources. And given a scenario, describe how to troubleshoot network connectivity problems and other common network problems. The bottom line here, when connecting to a network, before you can start networking, you will have to physically connect the host to the network using a physical cable or wireless technology. While some networks are simple and others are complex, they all can be brought down by a faulty or misconfigured switch, access point, or network card. They can also be brought down by a faulty cable. The first section in this lesson reveals, reviews the physical component that allows a computer to connect to a network and briefly discusses physical network problems. I must emphasize to always make sure that the computer is physically connected to the network. That is, make sure that the cable is connected properly and the wireless card is turned on or enabled. Look at the LEDs. If you have no, L linking or no link lights, you are not physically connected to the network. Note uh, wireless connections will be discussed more in Lesson 4. TCP IP, the bottom line, since the Internet has become so popular, so has the TCP IP protocol suite that the internet runs on. One of the two main protocols mentioned in the name is the IP protocol which is responsible for addressing and routing packets between hosts. Much like sending a letter through your post office to a specific street address located within a city or zip code, each host must have its own unique IP address so that it can send and receive packets. Most students will only consider PCs as being host. A host is any computer or device has a network interface and has or is assigned an address. The traditional IP addressing is IP version 4, which will eventually be replaced by IP version 6. There are about 4 billion IP version 4 public addresses of which all public addresses are currently depleted. However, to move to IP version 6, which addresses are significantly longer, will take time and must be done in stages to minimize network disruption. IP version 4 addresses consist of 32 bits separated into 4 octets, or 4 sections of 8 bits. The computer sees these as binary, but it is converted to dotted decimal or human readable formats as illustrated by these examples. Looking at IP version 4 networks. While classful addresses have been replaced with classless or classless internet interdomain routing known as CIDR, C -I -D -R, addresses as a method to make more use of the addresses it is best to discuss the class A, B, and C networks and the respective subnet mask, as illustrated in this chart. With the class A, B, and C, it is easier to see how the subnet mask subdivides the network addresses and the host address from an IP version 4 address. Remember the class A network uses only the first octet for network addressing. Class B uses the first octet, first two octets for network addressing, and Class C uses the first three octets for addressing. Each of these 
classes have their respective subnet mask which defines the network portion of the address. For example, 255.0.0.0 class A, 255.255.0.0 class B, and 255.255.255.0 class C. With CIDR, we are no longer confined to using complete portions of an octet for network addresses. We are able to use any number of bits for the network portion. For example, a class B network is identified with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. This tells us the first two octets, or 16 bits, are used for the network portion. In CIDR, we would represent it as a slash 16. We will cover more of this uh, information when you take the CNT 2510 Network Essentials course at Ember Hills Community College. Using private addresses and NAT. Another method to extend the use of IP version 4 public addresses is to set aside some addresses for private sp addresses. Private addresses can be used by any organization but are not routable through the internet. To connect these computers to the public network, the internet for example, you would use network address translation, also known as NAT, N-A-T. You should be able to see a private address and identify it as a private address. Here's a list of private addresses which you should memorize. Looking at IP version 6 networks, while most of you will be familiar with IP version 4, IP version 6 will be foreign to most because it is relatively new and it has not been implemented in most networks. When discussing IP version 6, keep in mind the IP version 6 address is 128 bits. To simply simplify the expressing of 128 bits it's expressed in hexadecimal digits. Subnet mask is still used with IP version 6 networks but is usually defined at 64 bits. With IP version 4 there were about 4 billion IP addresses. Now with IP version 6 there are approximately 340 followed by 36 zeros addresses available. More addresses than we will be able to exhaust in our lifetime, I'm sure. The item that's quite different with IP version 6 addresses is the different addresses used on the same host. Instead of, instead of having a single address, a host can have a global unicast address, a link local address, and a unique local address. A global unicast address is a public address that's globally routable, routable and reachable on the IP version 6 portion of the internet. The link local address is a private non-routable address confined to a single subnet. They are used by the host when communicating with neighboring hosts on the same link but can also be used to create temporary networks for conferences or meetings or set up a permanent small LAN. Routers process packets destined for a link local address, but they will not forward them to other links. A unique local address meant for private addressing with the addition of being unique so that joining two subnets does not cause address collisions. <laughs>